It all starts with 1981's Castle Wolfenstein, developed for Muse Software by Silas Warner. This Apple II gem gave your unnamed prisoner limited resources to escape the titular castle in a game that was way more stealth than shoot 'em up. Also, digital Nazi voices. Warner followed it up with Beyond Castle Wolfenstein in 1984, in which the same prisoner, we're assuming it's the same guy, followed up his imprisonment the only way that makes sense, by trying to blow up Hitler. The game introduced new mechanics like hiding bodies and also bribing guards. The Silver Age of escaping from Hitler's clutches began in 1992 with the release of Wolfenstein 3D. Its software strayed a little bit from Warner's original vision, in which we mean they took a fire axe to anything that wasn't shooting and filled it with shooting and blood and bullets. And of course, it was a massive success and basically laid the roadmap for every first person shooter that would come after it. Wolfenstein 3D also introduced Lantern Jaw William B.J. Blaskowitz, who is notable not just for leading the series, but for also being one of gaming's few Jewish leading men. Of course, his Judaism comes from just the fact that his mom was Jewish, so there's really no way to know if he keeps kosher and observes the Sabbath. Still, interesting. In what would later become something of a meme for Wolfenstein games, Blaskowitz is captured while he's investigating a supernatural Nazi threat that soon proves to be all too real. In the case of Wolfenstein 3D, that meant mutants and mecha Hitler. After getting the year with Wolfenstein 3D, its software closed out in 1992 with Spear of Destiny, which was something of a prequel meets an expansion pack and also featured cover art that would not be out of place in a White Snake video. Then Wolfenstein disappeared for nine years. Macarena? Never heard it. Titanic? Must have missed that one. Seriously, the entire 90s. Gone. Luckily, BJ was back in 2001 with Return to Castle Wolfenstein, appropriately enough, developed by Grey Matter and Nerve Software with oversight from it. In this reboot of sorts, Blaskowitz is investigating the SS Paranormal Division when he's captured and thrown into Castle Wolfenstein. He escapes, but is so creeped out by the Nazi plan to resurrect Heinrich I that he goes back to Castle Wolfenstein, hence the titular return. The multiplayer-only Wolfenstein enemy territory was originally developed as both a sequel and an expansion to Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but when it never panned out, it was just released as freeware. Now, it did get a standalone, commercially available sequel later, enemy territory that is, except it was set in the Quake universe. I don't know, you figure it out. Though it came out eight years later, and is just called Wolfenstein, Raven Software's entry into the BJ Blaskowitz canon is actually a sequel to Return in Simply Wolfenstein, BJ gets a magical necklace, later revealed to be uh, the Thune Medallion that lets him see in something called the Veil and basically gives him superpowers. Now, interesting thing about Wolfenstein, there was a motion comment released before the game that seemed to imply that all of the id software games, the entire BJ Blaskwitz series, is happening in the same canon but it's still not exactly clear. So it's 2014 and we've got Wolfenstein The New Order. Will Mecha Hitler return? Is this in the same canon? Well, we don't know, so we can't tell you. But you can go forward into the new Wolfenstein knowing that you have as good an understanding of this game's canon as anybody on Earth, which is to say not very much, because it's weird.